mind one thought at a time. Greetings and welcome to the Changing Minds Online Empowering Women Series. How are you doing today, Jessica? I'm doing awesome, Akina. It's a beautiful, beautiful day here in New Jersey. Um, The spring has finally arrived. I saw my first flowers blooming today and I'm just really excited about um, new beginnings in spring and just really as we enter the season, really thinking about what we're looking to create for our lives. How about you? Oh, that is wonderful. Same here. You know, I've been doing a little traveling this week and last. And it's nice to actually be able to sit in Huntsville today. (laughs) So, you know, I'm definitely enjoying my surroundings. But I am so excited for our show today. We will be speaking to a wonderful friend of mine, and he is a coach, a business strategist, speaker, and certified SEO master. And we will be talking about staying in your truth. So I would love to introduce to everyone Dagmar Gattel. Hello, Dagmar. How are you doing today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, I love. we both love this topic, and we just can't wait to get started. So can you yeah, tell us too. about how you – yes. Can you tell us about how you uh, you decided to stay in your truth? Yeah, it really came by me recognizing that I was so miserable in my life and looking for what makes me so miserable. And it started like I grew up in Germany, and in Germany, a lot of times the parents, they really um, are very strict, at least at the time I grew up. And you were really um, forced to please everybody and you really... um, follow what the environment showed you, right? So I really never thought about who am I. I always kind of modeled how my parents behaved, how how my environment behaved, how the little village I grew up behaved in. And I always felt it's not me. I always felt like I don't feel I'm living my life. And then with the move to the United States for 10 years, what, 10 years ago, I really realized I'm becoming more and more me, and I have the freedom to to find out who I am I, and what is it really what I stand for and what I believe in. That's really beautiful. You know, it's interesting that you talk about that because there's so many people really just do follow a specific mindset, a specific culture, the way that they were brought up. And a lot of times people don't actually know who they are. Now, I actually had a very opposite type of upbringing. Now, my parents certainly wanted me to follow their rules, and I I probably did grow up in that culture where that's what was accepted. Um, I just, that was never for me. (laughs) You know, I think my parents will let you know from a very young age I was doing my own thing, you know. I think as soon as I learned to walk, I learned to walk away from my parents. So I, you know, always had a very, very strong um, opinions about who I was and what I was wanting to do. And one of the things that I found in my journey in my life is that I quickly became jaded. And especially, you know, after college, you start to conform You start to do what you think is accepted, you know, whether you're doing it because of your working, you're doing it because of expectations that society and culture places on you. You know, you really start to lose yourself, and especially as women, because there's so many roles that we're expected to play. And, you know, we want to look a specific way, and and we want to listen to specific, you know, even specific music. We want to be what you know, we want to be able to fit that cookie cutter. We want to go to the right places. We want to carry the right handbag, have the right shoes, you know, be wearing the right brands. And we're so set on this kind of conforming that we lose track of who we are. And I certainly, you know, and I've discovered very recently, and it's fitting for me that we're talking about this today, that I actually lost who I was. And I wasn't true to who I was anymore. I was being inauthentic. And I realized I had stopped knowing who I was. And, you know, I, I got to a point in my life where I didn't recognize who I was looking at in the mirror. 
And there was nothing wrong with the person I was looking at, but it just wasn't me anymore. You know, what role did discovering who you are as a person authentically, you know, what role did that play for you? Did you have a similar experience in that similar aha moment? I had the aha moment. We did a mastermind where we chose to read a book, right? And the book was, I was not familiar with it. It was The Four Agreements. And I thought it's an easy book for me to read because I'm spiritual. So I'm reading these books normally um, fast, and I can implement them. And this book was tough for me. This was one of my hardest books, not from reading, but from living it. And like the, the beginning, like the first agreement was to be impeccable with your words. And I'm, I'm very conscious about how I say something, and I always want to say it with love, no matter what I say, because... I, I want to help others and empower others. I don't want to hurt others or to, to what is the English word, minimize others, like speak down to others. But the, the second and the third agreement, that was hard for me. Don't take anything personal and don't make assumptions because I thought I know what others mean when they say something or I analyzed others and I assumed I know exactly why they behave in this way. I never questioned myself. And this helped me a lot by now staying in my truth. I, in a positive way, I separate myself from a situation and I let it be and I don't judge and I don't assume. And I really allow myself to experience the situation and think through who, who am I and how do I want to act to this and not reacting anymore. Wow, that makes perfect sense. You know, uh, I had a similar upbringing as well where um, I was called structure and you did this and you did that and you didn't do this and you didn't do that. And then, of course, I picked a career where you do this and you don't do that and you do this and you don't do that. (laughs) So, you know, I I didn't get to have all of the fun. So when I went out with my friends, I didn't know how to act because, I, you know, I didn't know how to have fun. But now we're doing Changing Minds Online and, you know, having my lovely co-host, Jessica, I've really been able to open my eyes to see how important it is to live in your truth, to know that, you know, it's okay to be you and it's okay to be different. And, you know, and it doesn't matter what other people think of you as long as you're living as your authentic self because at the end of the day, you get up with you and you go to bed with you. And if you're not comfortable in your own skin, then it's really not worth the time. You're, you need to have, you know, security in living. You need to be secure in your own skin. You need to be secure in what you're doing. And you shouldn't let anybody take that away from you. So that's why I'm loving this topic because I definitely relate with what you're saying because for years I let people take that away from me because I was living up to a certain standard. But, yes, it's okay to be able to live and work in that standard, but as long as you have your core values and you don't let anybody take that away from you, that is when you're living in your truth. Uh, Do you agree with that, Dogma? Oh, absolutely. And I love how you said it because what it really is for me, vibrations. So if I I believe that all humans, right, we have the intuition, perhaps that we lost them over time or perhaps we could not develop it as much because of our environment, but we have the intuition. We can feel if something feels good or something feels bad. And we can feel if we some with somebody together if it's good vibrations or not good vibrations and then staying in my truth means if it's not good vibrations I don't need to be there like in in my old life I felt obligated or I wanted to be friendly or I wanted to please so now like I'm learning I'm growing I'm staying in my truth if it's not feeling it doesn't feel good to me then I say thank you very much and I'm moving on and please you move on but we don't need to move on together but before that it was like I couldn't say it because I didn't want to hurt them. But then I always said no to myself and yes to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can relate to that for sure. That's really powerful. 
I'm actually reading a book right now called Essentialism, and it's really talking about exactly what you're talking about. A lot of times we just say yes to everything. And in doing so, we not only lose ourselves, but we lose our choices. And we're really not choosing powerfully, like, who we are, what we want to show up, and, and really what we want to do. And, yes. you know, for me, it's about really getting a gauge and really getting an idea of how you want to show up in the world and who you want to be. And that was really what my journey was. When I did discover that I no longer recognized myself in the mirror, I had to look back and I had to say, okay, well, who am I? I rediscovered who I was and I re fell in love with myself. And what I wound up doing, and I did read that book actually, The Four Agreements as well, and it played actually a role in my journey as well. But what I realized was that I needed to make an agreement with myself and with the world as how I wanted to show up in this world. See, I'm a firm believer that we all have two different selves. We have our ego self and we have an authentic self. That ego self is that self that we just learn to be. It's that reactionary self, that unintentional self. Like Akina said, like you said, Dagma, it's that self that you just kind of do for everybody else. That you're not, when you're saying yes to everything, when you're doing things to please other people, when you're doing things out of fear, when you're doing things out of insecurity, when you're not actually making choices, it's all coming from your ego. Here's the thing, right? That person is not real. And it's right. only really based upon your limiting beliefs. And that person is only yeah. really based upon your reactions to situations when you're not Absolutely. in control. Yeah. But on the flip side, we do have another self, and that is our authentic self, who we are created to be. And the great part about it is that we actually get a choice. You know, that authentic self, that, that who we are authentically, is the way we choose to show up in the world. Consciously, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's when we're making a conscious choice and a conscious decision of how we want to show up in the world. You know, for me, yeah. what that actually means is really discovering how you want to show up in the world and creating a contract with the world of how you're going to be. And, you know, and I will share what my contract with the world is. You know, my contract of the world is that I'm choosing to be loving, joyful, and abundant. And that's how, and when I'm in a situation, you know, especially when I am tripping back to my ego self, right, I'm being reactionary, I'm being, you know, I I go to that ego maybe for me, which can be arrogance, it can be aggression, it can be aggressive, it can be, I can be competitive, you know, I can have self-doubt and beliefs about myself. So if I'm in a situation where I see myself responding in that way, being true to myself What it means is remembering what my contract is and saying, okay, if I'm being authentically me, which is loving, joyful, and abundant, how would I react in this situation? And then I stop, and instead of just reacting, or what would I do, I should say, it's not reacting, instead of just reacting with that, you know, without thinking, I'm choosing consciously what I'm going to do. And when you start making those conscious choices and you're true to who you are authentically, and you live in that all the time, you're going to see this energetic shift around you. You'll notice that all of a sudden you start to really attract from a greater place. And I loved how you talk about having vibrations. You know, we know that vibrations can be measured, and the highest, for me, vibration is is to be in a state of love. And, you know, the lowest vibration is to be in a a silt of of guilt, fear, shame, all of those things. And that's how we're coming from, That that's the way we're coming from if we're, you know, acting out of our ego. When we're acting out of authentic self, we're acting at a much higher place. So you're going to start to attract people and resources to really fulfill and create the life that you want to live. And then you'd be very surprised how quickly things start to change and how quickly you start to really choose it more often. You know, every time you choose to be yourself, yourself authentically, the choice becomes easier until from really, and some people say your reaction will always be your ego, but I actually believe, I don't, I don't believe that. I actually believe that if you practice enough, it's a muscle, that you actually will start to, to react from your authentic self. And when you do that, I think that's when you really reach that state of, of enlightenment or self-discovery. It's the closest we can come to God is to be living all the time in our contract of who, of how we choose to be with the world. Does that make sense to you? Totally. And you know what, what you just said, automatically I had this thought, 
if I'm not real, if I'm not authentic, if I'm faking something, and it's subconsciously, right? It's not that we do it consciously. We get sick. Why? Why are so people, so many people stressed out, have migraines? So, uh, also all these illnesses because we hold ourselves back. We're not saying no. We're saying yes to something we really don't want. We stay in a relationship we don't want. We stay on a job we don't want. But we feel we we obligated or we don't have another choice. And it weakens us. And so more, we, so longer we stay, so weaker we become. And so more difficult it is to get back up. Because if, if you're already down, you don't have the energy to get back up. So it's so important. And I realize that with me because, like, I think with women, with women we, we cry if something hurts us or we cry when we are upset. But for me, crying is something where I don't feel... Uh, I'm myself, so then I analyze myself if if, if it's something like uh, is my heart touched or is it something I feel not treated fair? Because staying in my truth needs it means I'm speaking up for myself. So I need to recognize when do I need to speak up for myself or do I, do I want consciously to choose the misery over that? So I think I love what you said with your ego self because your ego self is something you choose consciously on a childhood behavior, but it's still a conscious choice, which becomes a subconscious choice, like uh, driving a car. First it's a conscious learning, then it becomes a subconscious learning, and you don't recognize it anymore. So I love what you said, your authentic self and your ego self. That really by just recognizing this, I think we can change a lot. Wow, that is awesome. You know, I like the way that we are going into uh, this conversation. Now, You've given us so much insight so far. Now, when you're speaking to uh, someone that you're coaching about uh, staying in their truth, uh, what are some of the steps that you give them? So when somebody comes to me and first we find out what is their real potential, right? It's not only what they do, but where they're really good in, what is really the niche, especially online, what is really the niche they can enrich others, they can empower others, because we three know People are not buying because they like the product or they like the server. People are buying because of you. Like, why do people come to this radio show? Perhaps not because of the topic, because because of you both, how you present the topic, how you're living the topic. So I guide my clients through the process because I believe in empowerment, that on all the ways, every step, they realize the power they have. They realize what they can do with their experience, with their knowledge, and with the ability to create this bigger reach and really like changing changing millions of hearts or minds or helping millions with their health or with life changes, whatever they want to accomplish, it's possible. So it's really for me so important to to help them to make sure that they can reach their dreams. And by them reaching their dreams, they can help their clients do the same. That's really true. I mean, I, I agree with you that it really does first start with that point of self-discovery. You know, now here's the thing, and I want to speak a little bit about this. A lot of times, people will intentionally choose to be someone other than they're not. And I do want to spend some time about this because we are talking a lot about choice today. And I want to speak about what the consequences of that is. You know, for me, for a long time, um, I did choose to be someone who I was, and I felt like I needed to keep up a persona, and I did share this with you. And the result, and for me, and I think the results are the same for everybody, it's two things. Number one is you stop loving yourself, and because you're not true to yourself anymore, and you, you're not being who you want to be, so you're just not going to be in love with yourself. And then the second part about it is, and I want to speak about, is that you may think that you're fooling people, but the truth is that you're fooling no one. You know, people can see right through you. When you're, in, when you, you know, it, when you are not being who you are, people can tell. You know, and it's that's the problem with it. So, I mean, what do you think about that, Dogma? Uh, would you allow me to disagree? Yes, go ahead. Yes. So I disagree that in 2015 most of us still have the ability and the intuition to recognize when somebody is not their real self because we are so used to fix something. We're so used to put up on our happy face outside 
that most of the people, they don't recognize that somebody is depressed or somebody um, is mistreated. So for, for me, it's really like not staying in your truth can, can limit you so much that the pain perhaps going through and saying, no, I don't want to do this anymore. No, I, I'm, I'm not staying in this job anymore. No, I'm not staying in this relationship anymore is longer term relieving frees you up is it, bringing you much so much health and so much happiness and so much joy so perhaps you can fake it to others but you cannot fake it to yourself you recognize it and perhaps you have migraines or perhaps you have a vein disease or perhaps you have other issues but your body your body physically i believe that strongly will signalize if there's something wrong with how you treat yourself and if you are not real, if you're not authentic, and I experienced this. The more authentic I became, the more real I, I become. I have no health issues anymore. Like, my life becomes so much more lighter. I feel so much more empowered than, like, 20, 30 years ago where I tried to fit in and tried to please everybody but did not take care of myself. Yeah, you know, I would agree with that. I think there's a difference between trying to fit in and there's a difference between being inauthentic in your words and your actions. And I think that's really where I'm saying it in that part. That's what I think, you know, people can see right through. Oh, you know, so, oh I see. And, and mm-hmm. that's really, um, to me, what it really comes down to, it's really whether or not you're coming from a place of your heart, which is when you're being authentic, yeah. you're coming from your heart. And you speak in a way that's real. You speak in a way where you're, you're pouring your heart out. You, you're having your emotions. The love that you have for the world and for other people becomes, like, so strong. People can feel it. They can see it. They can sense it. It, just, it. it encompasses who you become and who you are. When you're not really being true with your words and with your actions, meaning you're doing things in a, in a way that's inauthentic, you know, that's when I think you're really just coming from your head. You're worried so much about what people are thinking and you're not getting your message across. And it's like, you know, especially for people in sales, and this is really where I, you know, have the most experience with this. A lot of times, you know, you'll hear people and they'll go to these, these communication workshops and they'll, you know, go and they'll study NLP, and those are fantastic things to do. I think everyone should do them. But they'll come out of that and they'll have learned these catchphrases. And they'll learn how to ask really great questions in order to, and, you know, to get their sales across, to find a need that the other person has. But then there's a group of people who get that far, but they don't actually genuinely want to help anybody. You know, they don't actually genuinely want to make people's lives better. They don't really care about the person or what their answer to their question is. They care about only closing the deal. And we're talking about sales here because I think it's an analogy, but we all do this every day. You know, all they care about is, is making their sale, about convincing the other person to do something their way. But they're not genuinely concerned about the other person. Well, the other person knows that. And that's what I'm trying to say is you really can't fool people from that sense, from that perspective. You know, in, at that point, and, and, and I don't know how to explain it in this, and, it, and maybe it's really just energetic because you can say the same thing in two different ways, and I think be authentic and be inauthentic at the same time. But there is a difference. And, you know, it's, it's when you, and that's what it really comes down to. It's like really deciding and choosing what you genuinely care about and want to do and really showing up that way. And I don't know, you know, Dagma, do you, what do you think of that? Does that make more sense to you? Yeah, it makes more sense to me. And now I get how you meant it. I misunderstood that before. I think what it is for me, it's a conscious choice if I want to live in an illusion, like the magic button, right? So especially in my industry, online marketing and search engine optimization, sometimes people want to believe there is a magic button which overnight can rank them, which in, in, our, in our intuition we know there is no magic button. It is work to get to the point where you grow and you are successful. Like millionaires, they are not born overnight. And only they, they have many, many years where they build it up, and then overnight, finally, they have their success, but it's not the success they get from the day. So what, what I like to envision when you say that, or what I envision is if you need to choose if you want to live in an illusion 
where you just want to have a fast fix, where you want to have a fast success, where you want to do something without putting any work in, that's fine. And then we need to live with the results or you, you live in your reality, in, in your truth, in your authenticity. And you know it, it's, it's a process. But so further you go ahead with the process, like what you say, others can feel where you are in the process. Others can, others can feel, do you want the magic button or are you willing to go through the process to crawl? And I loved how you said that with NLP because I'm an NLP practitioner from Germany, and NLP can be used in the most wonderful way or in the most manipulative, manipulative, is that the right English word, mm -hmm. way, where it's, it's a tool, right? That's what it is. So it helps you to change your childhood behavior. So if you're not familiar with it, somebody can manipulate you and let you do something what perhaps you don't want to do. I believe we can feel this, what you said, we can feel this. If somebody wants to manipulate us, and then we consciously need to say, do we want this or we don't want this? Do we want to believe if a new boyfriend tells us how wonderful we are and they want to marry us after three days? And do we want to believe this and move on? Or do we want just to to be skeptical but but learn to listen? Like, what is it what we want to do? I think that, that's the most important for me. What do I want? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think we, we actually probably wound up diverting into two completely separate topics and you know I'll take responsibility for that because you know speaking and really for me what, what that comes from is when I learned to actually speak from my heart and be authentic and come from that place it was really life-changing for me and perhaps speaking from your heart is will be a whole nother call maybe we can Akina I'm sure we can set that up soon right oh most definitely yeah, I think that's I think that's a great topic, and I would love to just have an, a, another call just on that, just on speaking from your heart, and you know, like you know, certainly like you said from NLP. I mean, I think that there's two sides from it. There's the side of, and, and I love NLP. I think everyone should study it. It's very powerful, especially if you have uh, issues with communication. If you don't find yourself that you're a clear communicator, this could be a really powerful way to just make sure you're listening to what people are saying, recognizing. Um, how other people are interpreting what you're saying. But there is that side to it where people will just learn phrases and then think, you know, that's going to get them 100% success yep. overnight, like you said. It doesn't really work that way. But um, then again, that's a, really a topic for another time. But it is almost at 9.30. Dagmar, if there was something that you wanted to leave our audience with tonight, I know we brought up so many great points and got into so many different areas, but you know, if we could summarize it and wrap it up and you could leave everyone with one thing, what would it be? That believe in yourself and just do it. Because the more sometimes we think about something, the more difficult it becomes. So oftentimes we really figure it out on the way. And that is, in my experience, in my life, was in moving to here in the United States or moving from one city to another and starting new life, getting new jobs. It's really my experience. Staying your truth means following your heart, like what you said. It's really connected. Following your heart and doing what you know is the best for you and not doing what others find is the best for you. Wonderful. Now, if someone wanted to contact you because of all the wonderful things that we've discussed today, how could they get in contact with you? They can, they are free to call me. My phone number is 321-209-0208. Or they can email me at SEO at, and then my first and last name, DagmarCatel.com. That's SEO at D-A-G-M-A-R-G-A-T-E-L-L.com. Thank you. Wonderful. Now, if you were touched by something that Dagmar said today, you can find this podcast on, of course, ChangingMindsOnline.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Podomatic, Stitcher, Tuned In, SoundCloud, and, of course, we're on YouTube. So please go out and get this recording and, you know, really dig deep into the conversation. Thank you so much, Dagmar, for being on the show tonight. Well, thank you so much for having me. I think we could talk for hours, like this so it's just, just a deep topic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but, you know, we do 
to a close, but we do want to thank you for, for being our guest. I enjoyed our conversation. Um, I would love to continue it again another time. Um, but, you know, for tonight, this is the end of our call tonight. We always end our call the same way. Akina and I always tell you, everyone who called in, you know, we love you. We wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. We do, we do this for you. We couldn't do it without you. You know, God bless. Make it a really powerful week. And I'm excited to be with you guys on Sunday. Sunday I'm running another marathon, so I will share whatever I learn. I always learn something while running a marathon, so I will share it with you on Sunday night um, on our Sunday night inspirational call. Have a great night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night.